atrial fibrillation causes blood clots to form. Um, and those blood clots can transmit through your body or and, and travel yeah. through your body and wind up in your head or your uh, lungs or your heart or mm -hmm. your extremities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, atrial fibrillation um, needs to be well understood. The symptoms need to be discussed. And um, especially elderly patients who aren't as necessarily active, right. they not have the same symptoms that someone who is active would have related to mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation. Um, so uh, there needs to be a discussion about it and, and people need to understand the impact and relevance of such an arrhythmia. Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders radio network heard across the USA on your favorite podcast channel and find us on YouTube. We are talking today about a very, very important topic. Heart disease is one of the highest uh, death rates. A lot of us have heard the concept of AFib, atrial fibrillation, but we don't necessarily know a lot about it. As a matter of fact, we on Answers for Elders probably need to have more content on it. And so that's why I'm very excited to bring you the following guest today, Mr. Mark Goddard, who is the Vice President of Clinical Services of Infobionic. And Mark, welcome to Answers for Elders. And we're going to dive into the whole world of our heart. Suzanne, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be able to talk about it. It's a um, personal subject that impacted my life. So um, wow. I, uh, I'm very much um, happy to be here and talking. Yeah, about Yeah, yeah. We hear about heart disease, and but we don't necessarily know how, how significant it is when it comes to our life expectancy. How influential is heart disease on the quality of our lives? Well, if you think about it from all the organs in your body, it is the primary one to keep blood circulated throughout it. So mm -hmm. it's feeding every other organ related to how well it works. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't pump blood efficiently, it impacts things downstream, like your ability to get rid of waste from your blood. Um, yeah. gaining weight and, and those sorts of things. I think that the understanding related to what the heart is and what it does isn't well understood and it impacts everything. It's mm -hmm. a downstream effect to every part of your body if it's not working the way it should be. Really, there is so much um, available to us now that we didn't know even a few years ago as far as how technology has been able to have early detection, things like that, of potential heart issues. What, how does that affect quality of life by having early detection? Well, early detection is critical, especially related to atrial fibrillation. You see a lot of commercials on TV related to atrial fibrillation, um, talking to you about the medications required for it. Those medications are, are meant to thin your blood because atrial mm -hmm. fibrillation causes blood clots to form. Um, and those blood clots can transmit through your body or and, and travel yeah. through your body and wind up in your head or your uh, lungs or your heart or mm -hmm. your extremities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, atrial fibrillation um, needs to be well understood. The symptoms need to be discussed. And um, especially elderly patients who aren't as necessarily active, right. they not have the same symptoms that someone who is active would have related to mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation. Um, so, uh, there needs to be a discussion about it and, and people need to understand the impact and relevance of such an arrhythmia. Sure. And you know, when you're, you're talking about this, um, one of the things that I've learned a little bit in prepping for our interview, and it was it blew me away that approximately 10.5 million adults making up about 5% of the adult population currently live with AFib. And the thing that's interesting is, is a lot of those people are, you know, they don't get diagnosed till in their seventies, which a damage has already been done. How does that, you know, how, when do sh symptoms, if they have that many, uh, 10 million people in this country, that's insane. Yeah. Um, the major factor related to atrial fibrillation and, and when it starts is quite often associated with changes in the way your heart is structured. So the shape of it changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. The reason for that quite often is related to things like high blood pressure or 
being a diabetic and not managing your blood sugar appropriately. Yeah. All the things that you would think of just to be a healthy person are the same mm -hmm. guides that I would follow related to heart health and atrial fibrillation specifically. If you have high blood pressure, the structure of your heart changes, very likely to have atrial fibrillation. Yeah, um, yeah. So, the, so those sorts of things need to be um, considered and understood right. and um, maintained. Yeah. So for our listeners, could you define what AFib really is? Sure. There's four chambers in your heart. Two of them are the atrium. Two of them are the ventricles. The ventricles pump blood throughout your body and mm -hmm. to your lungs. The atrium receives some blood back that doesn't have oxygen in it. Those chambers pump that blood to the ventricles. When you're in atrial fibrillation, the atrium don't pump effectively or efficiently. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're just quivering. So they don't empty in a normal fashion. So blood is left within those chambers. And that's where the, the risk of clots comes in. Ah. The fact that blood does not exit those chambers effectively and kind of swirl uh -huh. in there. And they wind up clotting. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a little structural appendage off the left atrium that winds up it's like a sack almost. And if you're not completely emptying that chamber, that's where those clots quite often will form. Yeah. Uh, and you, you need to avoid that. Yeah. The lifestyle, we, you've talked about diabetes, but it's also um, hypertension, high stress that it can affect it, and also obesity. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things that I know in this country, um, obesity is on the rise to uh, just unbelievable uh, statistics. Yeah. Um, how do you, you know, anticipate the future being by, you know, affecting AFib in the future? I think the advent of the commercial wearables um, mm -hmm. is going to change things pretty dramatically. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been as embraced by the older population today, mm -hmm. but the older population of tomorrow will be very much in tune with technology. Right. That technology will give them an idea of, hey, do I need to see my cardiologist related yeah. to what my um, health monitor is telling me? Mm -hmm. And from there, you would see your cardiologist and they would use a medical device to assess whether you have atrial fibrillation or not. The longer it goes undiagnosed, the more damage happens to your heart. Yes. How many are boomers would you say are really aware or making positive changes in this country? Are you seeing a shift or you're not seeing a shift? I don't necessarily see a shift okay. um, at all. Um, and a lot of times, and for whatever reason, you know, you can provide the information and, and the guidance isn't necessarily yeah. following. Um, yeah. I think, again, that'll change a little bit as the generations change and the older mm -hmm. generation more of this um, in tuned society that, that they become and are, mm -hmm. um, but there needs to be more change, um, than there is. It's just how to affect that change is is mm -hmm. the tricky part. I'm excited in our next segment to talk a little bit about, you know, your technology and, and uh, regarding infobionic and how it works, because this could be, this is life-changing in so many ways. And so Mark, in the meantime, uh, tell me a little bit about how people can find out more about your product. So for us, you could go to um, infobionic.com. Um, and it would take you to our web portal and, and you could see the technology that we're utilizing. Uh -huh. In the end, our product is a medical device. So it's mm -hmm. one that you would get um, prescribed to you at your doctor's office. Right. Um, we do have practices throughout the country that are utilizing our product. Um, most specifically, the Mayo Clinic is uh, using our monitor exclusively for all of their uh, locations. So it's quite an extensive network. Um, so yeah, it's a medical grade product that needs to be um, prescribed at the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. The primary advantage to our device is the fact that all the information transmits in near real time. So there's no mm -hmm. data delay and as a result, no treatment delay. Yeah. And for those of you that listening, cardiovascular disease is responsible for close to a million deaths in every year. So this is important that we talk about this. And Mark and I, we're going to talk about how AI fits into this picture. And we're going to be right back right after this. 
Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.